hello viewers welcome back we are now looking at adding indents to our financial model and we want this financial model to really stand out now we definitely want to continue to improve the formatting in this income statement in fact it's very customary to use borders to make line items like gross profit EBITDA, ebit and net income stand out which is exactly what we are going to do in this lesson so let's take a look let's start up here in this section with gross profit this section here gross profit this one right here let's start with that gross profit we really have two choices one we could pop up into this cell this one this cell right here f18 this one right here and this one right here d18 we can one decide to put a bottom border in place there a bottom border it means it's going to be below those a border is going to be below those figures that we've highlighted or we could the second we could decide to pop into this cell this cell for gross profit that those two cells f19 and g19 in those cells that we've highlighted and from there we put a top border a top border means the border is going to be above those figures that we've highlighted they are going to look the same either way if we we take the first approach or we go by the second approach it's going to look the same whether we insert a bottom or a top border it's the the idea is that we are going to have a same look but if we go into these cells for gross profit like the way we are in and we put in a top border in place it's going to allow us to add rows these rows that are moving are moving across the rows of excel it will allow us to add rows to our model if you want which is not the case with the first approach so with that in mind we are going to go by the second approach of putting the top border in those two cells that we've highlighted the f19 and the g19 because it is going to give us an allowance for us to add an extra law if we need it in the in the, in the future as we progress with our finance modeling so since we have highlighted those cells the f19 and g19 let's now go to borders we say that to get these borders they are within the home section of the ribbon so we need to go into the home section of the ribbon to be able to insert those borders so what are we going to do we are going to use shortcuts we are not going to use the mouse so we come to alt h for home that is the home section of the ribbon then we have those displayed we can see that from here this is where our borders are we have a letter b so instead we are now going to hit b for borders and now you are seeing that we are seeing the different options that we have from that point but now from there we are going to choose this bottom down side here which says more borders so we are going to pick m and that m is going to give us a section for more borders so we go to m m for more borders so 
remember with this dialogue box we 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 found we found it last time we found it a bit a little bit easier to use the mouse than the keyboard so we are going to tap we are going to tap to this top left option here we are going to just select this let's just go with this we we'll go with that one but we need also to be on the top so we can try we can maybe decide we can pick any from this let's just go with that and we pick it we are going to put it on the top we don't want it to entire document but we just want it on the top so what are we going to do we are going now to to hit the enter key because we have already selected what we want we are not going to add any color we just want to maintain those colors that we have we leave it in black so we hit the enter key and you can see if i remove the cursor you will see that we've gotten that straight line there those are the things that we do in accounting whenever you reach on where you are supposed to add or subtract something you have to put that horizontal line to this to separate what you are subtracting but we can't close off our account from here because we haven't finished we just put only single line as per accounting then the double line will come at the end but here we are not going to go by that accounting for accounting things we are just going to have something that is going to help us understand we don't want to be too more concerned about what is uh, what what is being done in accounting so it is the same thing we are going to be repeating for every item that we have there that we need to separate because we are separating the formulas from the values that we are inputting or that we inputted in our model so we've now gotten that thin thin little top border for us it's really nice we are now changing something so now definitely what we want we want to leverage the the use of the f4 key but as for now since we are just learning some of these things we are not going to use that f4 key because we say the f4 the f4 key helps us to repeat the last command but we want these things to be someone to learn to do them without using going to very deeper into the professional aspect though i know the other one saves time but i want you to first understand what we do so we are going to repeat some of these things even here we also do the same alt h for home b for borders m for more borders then we select the same and we want we want it on the top then we hit the enter key we have also put it there we do the same for a bit we we've highlighted the values we go to alt h for home b for borders m for more borders we select it you can select any you want then we we need it on the top let's enter and we have it there so we can also put it here but here we need to explain something before we go to the net net income so for the in, for the net income we also need to have that in place maybe let's first have that in place before we explain anything further alt h for home b for borders m for more borders we have the same selected and we want it on the on the top enter key it's there so we've put it there now for the for the for the net income it's our last line item so we need to close off we need to make it differ from because that single line means we are still proceeding but right now we want to want to say that we are finalizing what we've been doing because that's the end point of the financial model as per now so what are we going to do so we are now seeing that it is our last bottom line item so we need also to have something that we call a bottom line to show that it is the end of it 
but it's supposed to be a little bit different from the ones that are just separating the things that are still continuing. So we need to make a little bit thing, like the line to be a little bit bigger, to, to have a difference from what we are doing or what we've just done from the rest of the things. So the bottom, all the net income is obviously referred to as, as the bottom line. And this is because it's at the bottom of the income statement. And what we usually want to do is really make it stand out. So we really want to make it stand out so that these audience, all these people, these users, they are going to find it a bit highlighted to them in terms of their visual capacities. So let's go into that same cell for the for the net income. And now take a look at putting in a more pronounced border in place. So what you have to do is we want to highlight those two cells. And after selecting them, then we can go through the same settings to have those good borders. So we go to Alt, H for Home, B for Borders, M for More Borders, the same, same line. But now, instead of picking from our left-hand side here, let's pick from our, because these are a little bit thin. These, these are thin lines. These are thin lines. Let's now pick this third one from the bottom. And we are, now, we are not putting it on top. No. We are changing it. We want it on bottom. This one we can remove. We don't want it there. We want it only on bottom it's this line is a bit thin when you when you put it there for accounting for accounting we always go by the double line double underlining but here we are not in accounting and i don't want to have that mindset of working as if i'm as if i'm giving something to accountants we are there are those that are actually using the information when they are just learning excel so i just want to make it a little bit simpler for them to understand then later on they can go into our advanced courses and they will have that sorted so we can hit the enter key and now you can see sorry we've removed the other one we've removed the first one we had put the other one is supposed to be h for home b for borders m for more borders we need this the upper one it's supposed to be there. So you are seeing it is a bit standing out. This one is, a, is something that is a bit, a, bit, a bit thick. So we have put in those borders and we have those borders in place. So we can now look at how we can be able to adjust some other settings. So as you can see, we have nice borders in place. Maybe the last thing, the, the second last thing that we, we want to do to really make some of these line items stand out is put them in bold. And it's going to be really easy for us because it is just placing control B after selecting. Because we want these headings, these line items to be a bit bold. So we can do the same, we highlight all of them. We can highlight all of them at once. We start from the gross profit. We need also the EBIT. We need the EBIT. We need the net income. So we do control B to make them bold. So you are seeing it's a bit different. It, it thinks the visual impression, things keep on changing as we add in some different changes. You are seeing that the visual capacity, it keeps on improving all, all the way to where we are now, as we keep on updating and adding some new features. So, since we've done putting those into, the, into, into, into our financial model, so now, 
we've done highlighting, including those texts, and we've done a control B to make them broad. And that broadness, the control B is allowing them to be broad, and it's really quick for those different line items to change, at least to be a little bit visible to the viewers. So now, the other last thing that we want to do to both the assumptions, let's now look at the full model, because we've been looking at what we want, the last thing that we want to do for these assumptions and then the income statement, the, the assumption section and the income statement section, we want to put a little bit kind of in it in place. For instance, we might want to indent some of these words, these ones from here to here. We may, we might prefer to indent some of those words from the assumption section. We indent them and we make sure that at least they can really stand out from the from within that section, they can actually stand on their own. So after highlighting these values, we can now go to go to the format cells. So we go to control one. And now after hitting the control one, it brings up that dialog box for format cells. So we can now use the left and right arrows to move across. Because we want to move to, we want to be moving to those different sections, the number, alignment, format, borders, fill, protect, protection. So those are the things that we have within the format cells. So for us to access those points, we need to use the right or left arrows. And what we want to, to do, we want to get to alignment section. So we use the left arrow to go to alignment section. And now what we want to do, we want to get into the alignment section. So we, we, we use the tab key. We hit the tab key a couple of times to get to right this place. So we, we, we now again hit the tab key to go to indent. So we've gone to where it says indent. And what we just want to, what we are what we want to do there we want to just type in a one number one we had a zero there so we type in one and when we just type in that one then we can hit our enter so you are seeing the things have been adjusted a little bit they look a bit more close to each other so we have indated it and as you can see it has put in a really nice indent as you can see from there because they were a bit scattered but at least we've indented them so what now we need to do we also have to do the same thing to the income statement these values here we highlight them all of them but now, after highlighting, if you want to be very fast, you just tap the F4 key. The F4 key will repeat the last command, but that's not what I want. I want you to do it yourself. Go through the hardware and you will be able to understand some of the things in the advanced section of, the, of our Excel courses. But here, you can just tap the F4 key and it will be doing the same thing but what we want to go we want to go back into control one to our to our format cell dialog box and it is we are back into the alignment section of the format cells so we can hit the tab key once second so that we get into the indent section and we, we put there one we hit the enter key and we have also indented that so for those that want to be very fast, you can go ahead and start practicing this F4 key because it is just a one single 
is one single key that you place so that to repeat the last command but i want to have some of these things done by you guys so that you can be able to follow up because some computers you may find their f4 key they are not working actually when you hit it it brings something like hot key hot key support something like that so i want you to be knowing at least what to do if at all you have a difficult because you may press the f4 key and things don't work out and you start wondering what to do that's why we go through the real steps then if the your f4 key because the other one is just an application of hp especially when you're using those hp computers and depending on the version of the of the laptop you're using or the desktop some of these things may not be working that's why i'm giving you the all the all the criteria but at least for those that are having their computers are working you can actually do use the f4 key to have the last command repeated so we can now see that this is perfectly indented so now we want to look at the next video and we focus on things that we we, we want to 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 see in terms of filling these other parts that you can see from this point we need to make sure that at least we have these values filled these ones we need to have them filled even these ones up here we need to have them filled because we haven't done anything from this point we need to have even these values filled so let's now go to the next video and take a look at the actual calculations those are the calculations that we are going to have and they are the ones that are going to help us fill this assumption section and our financial model so we'll see you in the next video